Okay. So today I will talk about uh, some of the progress that happened in structural prediction the last few years, and particularly using who evolution that you heard about in the RNA lecture together with deep learning on machine learning. So to take one step back, we can start with um, uh, what is the background. The background is, of course, that today, for most proteins, we have a large set of homologs that can be arranged in a multi sequence alignment. These uh, alignments contain a lot of information. And in particular, what we're using in this case is compare two positions, one there and one here, with looking for co-evolutions, looking for signals that one, um, one of the positions change simultaneously other one change. You, know, you can go from like having one big and one small amino acids to have one small and one big. So the idea is basically that you start from a protein and you have some native interactions. You see no, most proteins are quite well packed. But if you mutate one of the amino acids, you, uh, mutate, for instance, this uh, pentamine in the middle to an arrow, these interactions are not going to be as favorable anymore. So we, you're going to be less well folded or less stable protein. However, in evolution, that is quite likely to be compensated for. So you're going to have a mutation of uh, one of the squares to another pentamine. But what was realized is that this also affects other proteins, so like they have indirect interactions. So this green triangle also will be affected by this mutation. Therefore, it's not so easy to look, just look at parallel correlations. You need to look, take this indirect coupling into account also. And this is something that was realized while in physics in the 90s. It was in a paper in 99 that nobody read. And then it was. Um, sort of rediscovered in the 2008, 2009. And um, this has this really re revolutionized the area of protein structure contact prediction. But that you already heard about in the RNA lecture. So what you also got to take and consider is look at one of these contact maps. So like this is a contact maps. The gray parts are the real contents and proteins and the other ones are predictions with two different methods. And you can realize that these are clearly not randomly distributed. They clearly are uh, contests that are, uh, they sort of cluster together, they have certain angles, they have certain patterns and so on. And this is of course something that is actually ideal for a computer because they can recognize patterns. So if you just consider the most simple pattern, if you look at the three by three part of this, real, this map, map, so here you have, uh, just some part of this uh, matrix that is three by three, uh, three residues. So that the rest is i, i minus one, i plus one, and j, i minus one, and j plus one. And then you can divide these into two groups. Either you have a content in the middle, or you do not have a content in the middle. If you have a content in the middle, you can then select the most common patterns. And you can see the most common patterns are, of course, to have like maybe one more contact. Of course, it's well, actually most common is to have no more contacts. But then this have one more contact, and then but then is to have three more contacts in the in the angles, and then you have two more and so on. But if you have no contact in the middle, all the eight possible patterns of having more contacts appear before you have two. And you never have anything with three. And you can also look at it and see that these zero contacts have no contacts at all. It's much more common than any of the others, but in this case they are more or less equal. So this is something that you can do, use machine learning for, for and to learn. So I will skip about 10 years of work or seven, six, seven years of work and present a method here called Alter Deep Learning called Raptor X by Jim Bouchou. And well, it was some work preceding this by us and others. But this was, I think it was one step up over early methods. So basically what they do here is that they have you take a sequence, you take a profile, and you predict the secondary structures and the surface area and so on. So then you have, and you put this into a matrix. So this is 
n is the length of a sequence, and then you have 26 features. So 20 of these are secondary are amino acid frequencies, and six are predicted as things like uh, secondary structure and the surface area as well. And then you use number of machine learning methods to turn this into a convoluted sequential features. And then you can make this into a matrix by just doing a, a cross product list, you took L by L. So you basically turn this into a matrix. You basically have to see how, how well does this method sort of features correlate with each other. And then you can add, which is probably the most important part, you add this DCA, this kind of co-evolution and the pairwise potential information that is already pairwise, inverse it together. Then you do this another set of convolutions, which is a type of neural networks, and you got the predicted contact map. And you can see that this map is better than earlier maps. So this is a method, method that uses just DCA or CCM pair, this version of DCA. And you can see that what they do in the same example, they see this, you can really get the whole helix and you can, you don't miss things. You know, like this is anti-parallel beta sheet here. You don't have no signal at all, but you get signal here. You also can see that all the green dots here that are false predictions are much fewer up here. So you basically get the cleaner predictions. And this is also compared to another method called MetaCycov that was doing similar ideas, but uh, not as well in this case. And this can then be used to model proteins. This is just one example. And the blue one, uh, I guess the red one is the real structure, and the blue one is the predictive structure, and it looks quite well. So that's quite good. Yeah, then this was, so this was the state of the art until three years ago, two, three years ago. And then we have these CASP competitions, which are basically blind predictions of the structures. And then the company DeepMind, which is a London based company that is famous because they developed the uh, first machine learning method that could beat the world champion in Go, or then on chess and other games as well, also. But here they applied in the protein structure prediction. They did a very similar approach. There were some variations to it, but basically, the idea is they have. A, you have a two dimensional covariation features here using sequence and, and multiple sequence features. One difference is made they made this deep network much deeper, so there are many, many more layers of interactions. And they didn't do the whole matrix at once, they only do the 64 by 64 block. And that was necessary, otherwise, you couldn't make it deep enough because you don't have the memory. And then you predict distances and torsion angles and predict it here. The difference is that you don't want to predict contact, yes, no. You predict actually the probability to be in a certain distance distribution. And then you use these distances for all contexts using a quite simple gradient descent protocol and optimize the structure. And you can see then, but in this case, you get a quite nice structure. So this was the performance in CASP. 13, so the A7D was this deep mind protocol. Basically, this is a way of measuring it that the, and the, you are better, you are so you have to the right. So you can see there was clearly better than all other methods. And you can also see that you can have here to the right, you can see that you have uh, an increase in performance with, if you have larger sequences, so more sequence and multiple sequence, sequence alignment. You really can see down here, at the, this is a normalized net, normalized cells. So you have worse performance in general, there are some exceptions, like the green ones, but in general, the more sequences you have, the better performance you get. So this DeepMind method is not really available because it's made by company and this is was not really useful for anyone else, but the same idea has been re-implemented in, for instance, by David Baker in a method called TRZ that basically does the same thing. It's not exactly the same implementation, but it's very similar. This mainly Sergio Oshikov at Harvard has done this. So they have a multiple sequence alignment. They use co-evolution signal sequences. They use a uh, thing like two lens evolution network, six delays of that. And they predict not only distance distribution, but also different angles. So five side angles, but also angles between side chains interaction. And then you use, uh, get all these contact maps, you put them into a like portion model and do a full automatic model relaxation. So do a very simple, simple steep descent method. Uh, and 
at the end you get nice models. So this is just some examples. So this is uh, you see that this is the one is the model, one is the tricky one, and it's like the team score, which is a measure of a good model is that is one if it's perfect is 0.87 or higher in all these cases. So you can get um, uh, uh, quite nice predictions. And this is actually common in many cases. You get these nice predictions. I will just mention it for we have a dis the discussion later tomorrow, uh, or it will be the um, uh, discuss what Alpha Fold Two did. So this is the DeepMind's next generation predictor, and you can just look at the overall performance. So this is average in CTS, which is basically the same as TM score, and you see that for the hard targets before 2018, it was like average of like 40%. Then it jumped to like almost 60 and now jump to almost 90. So it was a big, big jump here. And uh, it was probably a big jump already in between 11 and 12, but it was not as clear because August was probably more, more difficult in 12 than 11. And I guess in 2008, it was easy to August also in this category. But exactly how it works, I think that you will see in the next slide. Or in the next uh, lectures, you should read yourself and you should discuss it tomorrow. So, thanks for listening.